Today on the bench is a Hewlett Packard Model 209A Oscillator. In this video, I will show you how this oscillator was malfunctioning and what I did to repair it. Using an oscilloscope and a resistor decade box, I loaded the square wave output of the 209A with a 600 ohm load, since the oscillator has an output impedance of 600 ohms. Seen on the oscilloscope screen is a distorted square wave being produced by the malfunctioning oscillator. Here is another scope capture of the square wave output. This time the time base setting on the oscilloscope is set for 500 microseconds. You can still see that the distortion is present on the square wave. I then connected the oscilloscope and resistor decade box to the sine wave output of the oscillator. Seen on the oscilloscope screen is an unstable and clipping sine wave being produced by the malfunctioning oscillator. The clipping can be observed on the negative peaks of the sine wave. Here is the scope shot at 50 microseconds. Here you can see more pronounced clipping on the negative peaks of the sinusoid. The clipping on the negative peaks on the sinusoid made me suspicious of the oscillator's power supply rails. Therefore, I proceeded to disassemble the 209A outer case, exposing test points B plus and B minus for the power supply rails. I then measured the B plus power rail, finding it out of tolerance by more than two volts DC. It measured 17.98 volts DC. The B minus rail was on the edge of the minimum tolerance and measured minus 19.99 volts DC. According to the HP manual, these voltages should be a nominal plus or minus 21 volts DC with a tolerance of plus or minus 1 VDC. Clearly there is an issue here. I then continued to disassemble the oscillator to get access to its power supply section, which in this case is contained on its own modular PCB. The capacitors of interest that I looked at first were the ones right after the bridge rectifier. These are the smoothing filter capacitors that take the rectified signal and convert it to a DC level. I inspected the PCB and had noticed that one of the electrolytic capacitors was replaced sometime in the distant past. The job that they did was done rather poorly as evidence of this can be seen by the solder pads on top of the board. The solder flow on these pads was terrible and there was a gratuitous amount of residual flux left behind. It would seem that they took the easy way out and replaced the capacitor from the top of the PCB. At least they had chosen the correct value Mallory capacitor rated for 150 microfarad at 50 volts as a replacement for their spray capacitor. I also noticed that the other spray electrolytic capacitor was original to the unit. It was a 100 microfarad instead of 150 microfarad as indicated on the 209A power supply schematic and parts list. I then connected the power supply to AC mains and did a little troubleshooting to discover that the Mallory capacitor no longer was acting as a smoothing filter. Logically, I proceeded by disconnecting one side of this capacitor from the circuit board and temporarily connecting an external capacitor in its place. The power supply positive rail was then properly regulated and measured 20.58 volts DC. Using my digital multimeter, I discovered that the Mallory capacitor measured as an open circuit, which accounts for why it was not acting as a smoothing filter. Continuing with the troubleshooting, I measured the Sprague 100 microfarad capacitor out of circuit with my LCR meter and found that it measured only four microfarads. Clearly, this capacitor has been failing for some time and needs to be replaced. For completeness, I checked the C3 and C4 capacitors using my LCR meter and found both of them to be good. I then proceeded to separate the PCB from the rear of the case chassis. 
This required a lot of unsoldering of wires. I replaced the two bad capacitors with 30D series 150 microfarad 50 volt spray capacitors, which I soldered to the PC board. I then reassembled the board back onto the rear of the case chassis. I ended up replacing a couple of the wires on the AC inlet and on the line voltage selector switch because they got messed up during removal. I also replaced a resistor that appeared to get overheated as its body discoloration was evidence of this. The resistor still measured properly but I decided to change it anyway. Shown here are the two capacitors, one resistor, and the two wires that I had replaced. I then connected the power supply to AC mains and measured both the B plus and B minus rails where they measured plus 20.58 volts DC and minus 20.67 volts DC respectively. I proceeded with reassembling the oscillator and tested the sine wave output under 600 ohm load using the resistor decade box and the oscilloscope. For the first test, the oscillator was set to 600 hertz. Here you can see the oscillator putting out a clean sine wave under load. For the second test, the oscillator was then set to 6 kilohertz. Here you can see the oscillator still putting out a clean sine wave while under load. I then tested the square wave output under 600 ohm load using the resistor decay box and the oscilloscope. For the first test, the oscillator was set to 6 kilohertz. Here you can see the oscillator putting out a stable square wave while under load. For the second test, the oscillator was then set to 60 kilohertz. Here you can see the oscillator still putting out a stable square wave while under load. Functionality has now been restored to the oscillator. If you like this content, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button.